This, my friends, is how students cheat. One of my students showed me how they get the answers to Google Form quizzes. So today I'm gonna to give you a total of five things that you can do to improve the chances that your students are not gaming or cheating, I guess you'd call it, on your Google Form quiz. Welcome back, I am Mrs. P. Tarleton, here to help you work smarter and not harder. Let's get started. First up, create a password. If you create sections in your Google Form, right here, this equal sign will add another section. In that second section is where you're going to put all your test questions down here. So this will be all your test questions. Now before students can get to the test questions, they must enter a password. If you enter a password, they can't even get to the next section. So I usually just type password here. I don't give them points for this. So click here, go to zero points. So you must have it in short answer. Go right here to the three dots, more options, and you want response validation. I don't usually use numbers. I use text and then I can make up whatever I want as my password. And if there's an error, if they try to cheat, I will put this as the response that they will get. So this right here is going to be the password. Has to be typed exactly like that because contains, it has to be exactly like this. If it's not written like that, it won't work. So what will happen now when the students get the quiz? It will come here, it'll say the password. Remember we wrote the password is start quiz and there was a space in between there. Let's try to write something else. As soon as you put next, it'll say no cheating and it's not letting you go on to the next question. As soon as you put the correct answer, press next, it's going to go to the next section. Now, we hadn't finished creating the quiz so there is no next section and that's the end of that but your students will be taken to the next section and they can then begin the quiz. That's one way. The next method would be to create multiple sections and have the students go to different sections, kind of like passing out multiple versions of a test. That is the next way. I have a full video, I'll link it right here on how to do that so that each student can get a different test depending on how many versions you wanna make. Another safeguard that you could do if you're doing multiple choice questions, right here with those three dots again, you can shuffle the order of the answers. So if a student is kind of trying to peek over at the person's computer next to them, all the answers are gonna be a different order and they can't just kind of see where is the person clicking, the first one, the second one. So that's another method. Google Form also has lock mode built in and it prevents students from navigating away from the quiz until they submit their work. But be aware, lock mode is only available on managed Chromebooks that are running Chrome OS 75 or higher and it does require Google Workspace for Education account. Otherwise, you won't have this option. But under settings, right here, you have lock mode. So now, back to that screen that that student showed me that actually shared the answers and all that gobbledygook, right? This is what you have to do so that the answers do not show up on that hidden screen that the students know how to find. I don't know how, but they know. You can either do short answer text or multiple choice. And what you wanna make sure is right here under answer key, do not, do not choose an answer. But I'm gonna show you where you're going to choose the answer key. So once all your students have answered the questions, you go up to here to view in sheets. It's gonna take you to the spreadsheet where all the answers are. 
So here you have all your students' answers for all of the questions. And then you gotta go through one by one. No, 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 no. What I do is go click right here. So this whole column, I know the answer to this one should be 11.6. So once I highlight the column, format, conditional formatting, and we don't want that, we want it text is exactly 11.6 and you can have it change it to whatever color you like. I usually just leave the default there and then click done. Notice it automatically highlights the ones that are correct. I continue doing that. Text is exactly this answer should be four click done. I continue doing that for all of my answers and then I can quickly at a glance I can see who's got it right and who's got it wrong. Now I also go through and if when I'm glancing over these answers and I see this one here 11.5 well it's a rounding issue so I'm going to go ahead and give them partial credit. Let's try this one here. So 11.58, they just didn't round. Like the directions told them to round to the nearest tenth, they did not. So right here, if I click on the box, and I go to the fill color, for me, I use yellow. And then I know I give that person partial credit for their answer. Same here. It's a rounding issue. This, ah, probably not so much, but this one, they just didn't round. So again, click on the box, go up here to the fill bucket. If you don't see it, click on the three dots for more and choose the color. Then when I go through, I just count up how many they got right. And I listed in a column over here on the left side. Students cannot see this. Students cannot see your conditional formatting and when they go to that back end, it does not show them answers. So here are all the things that I do to try to get the best data that I can from my students. I know they just want to get good grades, but I want to know that they really know this information. What steps do you do to help eliminate this kind of skewing of the truth, cheating? Let me know in the comments. Remember. Step out, be uniquely wonderful you, and have a great day.